First, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to speak here today. I'll talk about the project that we've been working on uh, for predicting time to ovarian carcinoma recurrence using protein markers. In this study, we mainly focused on high-grade serious ovarian cancer types. Let me start with a, a little background. The standard treatment of ovarian cancer is a trim, uh, surgery followed by platinum-based chemotherapy. But the initial, resp uh, initial response rate is pretty high, but 25 to 30 percent of patients relapse within 12 months, and tumor doesn't respond to platinum therapy. Um, for the TCJ data set, Roughly 30% of patients were classified as platinum chemotherapy, oh, uh, platinum uh, resistant, sorry. So there is a need of novel predictors of a platinum resistance that can lead to change in therapeutic approach. Lately, we developed a patient classification system named classification of ovarian cancer, CLOVAR. Using TCGA data, we identified the subtypes and survival gene signature, uh, signatures, and then we built a prognostic model. We found that CLOVAR significantly predicted overall survival. These couple of Meyer curves were generated after classifying patients into three risk groups using CLOVAR, and this was obtained from the validation set. The log rank test was performed to compare overall survival in risk groups, and the p-value is very small for overall survival. But the prediction of progression-free survival is not as accurate as the prediction of overall survival. And we found a very similar pattern in other, several other gene signatures uh, from other studies. Those gene signatures are strongly, associ strongly or significantly associated with overall survival, but not with progression-free survival or treatment response. That motivated our work. Um, you may wonder why the sample sizes are different for these two plots. Well. Not all the samples had the progression-free survival information. That's why uh, we have a smaller sample size for this. Okay. In this study, we aim to develop a predictor of a platinum resistance using protein markers. For this, we use the reverse phase protein arrays, IPPA uh, technology. I think most of you are already familiar with IPPA. Uh, it is a high-throughput technology for measuring protein expression levels in a large number of samples. Using our PPA, we measured 172 cancer-related proteins and phosphor proteins in 412 TCGA samples with serous ovarian cancer. Of 412, 220 samples were included in the model construction. Those samples had non-missing values for progression-free survival, and they all had advanced uh, stage disease. In this uh, study, we developed a protein-driven protein -driven index of uh, ovarian cancer, and we named it PROBAR in line with CLOVAR. And let me show you a brief flow chart of how we constructed the PROBAR. First, we used 222 TCGA samples as a training set. And then in the next step, we applied the lasso, a statistical regulation method, to the TCGA set. I'll talk about this in the next slide just in a minute. Using the lasso, we identified the nine protein markers that are most associated with the progression-free survival. And we estimate the coefficient from the Cox regression. After that, we defined the probar as a linear combination of the nine protein markers weighted by the Cox regression coefficient. 
a statistical challenge of high dimensionality arises whenever you predict the survival using genomics or proteomics data. For the feature selection and coefficient estimation, uh, we use the lasso. The lasso estimator is obtained by maximizing the likelihood function with a L1 norm constraint. The main advantage of the lasso is it provides a parsimonious, very simple model by shrinking unnecessary coefficient to exactly zero instead of small values. By applying la the lasso to the TCJ set, we identified these nine protein markers and estimate the coefficients. You may notice that the coefficients are very small. Those are shrunk by the lasso. And it is known that shrinkage, uh, shrinkage may help avoid the overfitting problem. These are nine protein markers we identified. And these five proteins were, uh, these pro five proteins had a negative Cox regression coefficients, which means these were associated with a better performance, better outcome. And indeed, these, uh, indeed, these were uh, overexpressed in the low risk group. The other way, uh, other way around, these were associated pro outcome and overexpressed in the high risk groups. And these little bars indicate which samples are platinum resistant. And we see uh, more platinum resistant patients in the high risk group. After we identify the nine protein markers, we defined that we computed probar for each patient in this way, eight weighted sum. And then we classify the patient into one of two risk groups uh, according to probar. And we use the median as a cutoff. Here are results with the probar. This is based on progression free survival, and this is overall survival. And PROBA was constructed using progression free survival, but it is also predictive of overall survival. And again, uh, not all the samples had a progression free survival data available, so that's why we have a smaller uh, sample size for this. Well, these were obtained from uh, the training set, TCGA training set. And we need to validate PROBA in an independent data set. We were able to obtain 229 high-grade serious validation samples from Japan and Philadelphia. They were treated uniformly. And using RPPA, we measured the expression levels of 144 proteins and phosphoproteins for those samples. And as you see, PROBA is significantly predictive of both time to tumor recurrence and overall survival in an independent data set. And we tried out three group stratification, but we saw similar result. For the purpose of a comparison with a gene dribble model, we implemented the CLOBAR in our validation samples with the gene expression data available. Well, the sample size is uh, small uh, because it's only a subset of uh, validation samples that had a gene expression data available. So the sample size, we are just using 130. Let me first show you the results with the clover. No significant difference uh, in progression free survival between groups. But probar, obviously, it improved the prediction of a progression free survival. Finally, we try to test the robustness of the nine protein markers that we identified using the TCJ samples. To do that, um, we sort of, uh, in a reverse way, we use the validation samples to identify protein markers. And then we compare those samples 
uh, those proteins versus the original nine protein markers and see how much, they, how much similar they are. Using the validation samples, we identified these five proteins and let's compare this with the original ones. Unfortunately, AL is the only overlap. But when you clustered proteins using hierarchical clustering, we found that some proteins shared very similar uh, expression profiles. Let me explain this. Uh, these little bars on the first row indicate the location of the nine protein markers that we identified using the TCJ samples. And this one, the second row, this one is overlap. And these are the protein markers we identified using uh, validation samples. And overall, uh, our protein markers were spread out over the clusters. And in the, interestingly, nine and five protein signatures uh, included representative of proteins from each cluster. So in conclusion, we developed a protein-driven index of ovarian cancer, PROBAR, using progression-free survival. And we showed that it is predictive of both progression-free survival and overall survival in high-grade serious ovarian cancers. And many genetic signatures in other studies often contain a large number of genes. But unlike this, PROBA is simple, but it's still predictive, making it useful in clinical practice. I'd like to thank my collaborators, especially Kosuke Yoshihara and Lou Borhak, who is my mentor. And also like to thank Gordon Mills, Iling Nu, and all, other, all the other collaborators. Thank you. Sure, I'm curious that the, one of the common prognostic protein factors was AR, the androgen receptor. And, you know, I think that kind of goes back to the question that one of the, uh, uh, was, uh, our colleagues was asking about ER and, and lung adenocarcinoma. What's known about the role of androgens in, in growth of uh, ovarian cancers or other uh, women, women's cancers? Uh, you mean ER or? No, I, I thought you, no, AR. AR. Which uh, was, uh, well, I'm a statistician. You don't expect that, <laughs> <laughs> that kind of answer. Like well, <laughs> thank you for that great answer. Okay. Well, <laughs> at least it is a significant, uh, significant uh, statistically, and so we found yes, yeah, so we found uh, in many studies AOL, AOL as a significant predictor of ovarian cancer. Yes. I have a question that's hopefully more up your alley. Um, so I was wondering, you used an L1 regularization. There's a lot of evidence that uh, mixing L1 and L2 regularizations, uh, such as when using elastic net, you could basically also capture redundant predictors. Did you try anything like that, A? And B, if you did not, another trick is to sort of remove those first nine predictors that you got with your L1 regularization and, and PROVAR, and then see what's the next best group of predictors for basically predicting survival. Did you try any of those things? Are you talking about relaxed lasso yes. stuff? Uh, we haven't, but probably we can. I mean, do I that would later. suggest either yes. doing elastic net or yes. seeing what's the next group of predictors, because yes. that would be interesting from a biological standpoint as well. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll look into it. Thanks. Um, Anderson Baylor. Uh, I was wondering if you, uh, you had looked at the patterns of uh, uh, androgen receptor co-activators or co-repressors in ovarian cancer that may correlate with your patterns of expression. Uh, androgen receptor antagonists uh, like flutamide have a notoriously low response rate in ovarian cancer in the range of 5 to 8 percent, uh, despite the fact that there are studies out there that would suggest that the androgen receptor itself is expressed in about 70 percent of ovarian cancers. So I was wondering if you had looked at other factors that may be playing into your observations. Uh, we consider the uh, clinical factors uh, such as uh, age, stage, grade, um, surgery status, and also BRCA1 and 2 mutation. And those are significant, actually. Uh, but uh, we considered the multivariate, multiple COX regression, and PROBAR was uh, the most significant one across the data set. Four of your nine antibodies are phospho antibodies. So, could you please comment on the potential 
a technical bias related to the different ischemic time? Well, we haven't done um, that uh, functional analysis uh, which pass way of functions in in four clusters, probably we'll investigate it further. Thanks. Okay, thanks. So 